Hello everyone, I'm Muskan Bedi and I'm going to talk about speech centers and speech area. Communication is very much necessary among all living organisms and among humans, speech is the most effective means of communication. Speech has three types, spoken form, written form and reading form. Spoken form is where the ideas are expressed verbally. The written speech is where the written words are expressed by ideas and reading speech is where the written symbols are expressed verbally. So friends, now let me tell you about speech development. It takes place in three processes. One is the sensory input process, other is analyzing and interpretation unit and the motor output process. So in this process, the auditory and the visual association area, they feed the information to the analyzing and the interpretation unit. So the analyzing and the interpretation unit analyze and note the significance of the information. So this is done by the visual and auditory association area, the verniquez area, the angular gyrus and the uh, hand skilled area. Now in the motor output area, the motor areas, the Broca's area, the premotor area and the motor area, they control the movement of muscles of vocalization and writing. Okay friends, now let me tell you about the speech centers. There are six speech centers. They are the auditory association area, the area number 42, visual association area, area number 18 and 19, the Wernicke's area, area number 22, the angular gyrus, area number 39, the Broca's area, area number 44 and 45, and the hand skilled area, which is located in the premotor area. So the steps and processes for the effective communication through speech in response to hearing is called speech pathway. So let me tell you about aphasia. Speech or language disorder is known as aphasia. There are four different types of aphasia. The motor aphasia, which is known as Broca's aphasia, the sensory aphasia, known as the Wernicke's aphasia, the global aphasia, and the dissociative language syndrome. Let's see about word blindness. Angular gyrus in the area number 39, which is present in the inferior most region of the inferior lobe of the parietal lobe. This gyrus is the second receptive area to the angular gyrus of the visual receptive area. During this lesion, the Wernicke's area, area number 22, which is present in the temporal lobe, is not affected. This tells us that the person's auditory activity is not affected. In contrast to that, the connection of the angular gyrus to the visual cortex is affected. It leads to imparted visual reception, which is called alexia or word blindness or dyslexia or incomplete word blindness. The persons with such lesions have the inability to read written scripts, but they can write spontaneously. They can understand the spoken language. Repletion of what heard as the Wernicke's area is not affected. Let us see about word deafness. Word deafness is also called as auditory agnosia. Auditory agnosia is caused due to the lesion in area number 22, which is located in the superior temporal lobe. In auditory agnosia, the person is able to hear what the other person is speaking but he is not able to comprehend what the other person is trying to tell. However, in this condition, the person is able to comprehend other forms of non-verbal noises such as music, birds chirping or um, other vehicle noises. Now let So now let's look at the scenario. So you guys got the scene right? Yes, yes. Okay, then let's shoot. Camera is rolling and action! Come on! Cut, cut, cut! Rahul, are you okay? Rahul! What happened to him? He was hit in the head doctor while we were shooting the scene, he was hit in the head by mistake. Where is it going? Do you feel busy? What's your name? Can you remember where you are right now? Where was he hit? He hit over somewhere here, doctor. And he think on the left side, I think so. I think it's broken. And he's unable to speak. It might be due to motor aphasia. Let's do an MRI and yeah. Doctor, what happened to him? Let's do an MRI and okay. okay, doctor. Thank you, doctor. The MRI. Let's look at what has happened. The case we just saw about is about the Broca's aphasia. Broca's aphasia is the broad man's area 44 and 45, which is present on the inferior frontal gyrus of the frontal lobe with the dominant cerebral hemisphere. 
A lesion in the Broca's area results in the patient's inability to speak even though he has the ability to think what he wants to speak, write or read or he can also understand when he see or hear them. Earlier, the cause for Broca's aphasia would be a brain stroke or a brain injury by physical means. In Broca's aphasia, even though the language is perceived by the patient, he or she cannot express himself by speech even though there is no paralysis in the speech apparatus. Hence, this aphasia is also called as expressive aphasia or non fluent aphasia or motor aphasia. In the given case, the doctor asks the questions, do you feel dizzy or bad does it hurt? The patient cannot, uh, even though he understands what the doctor says, he cannot able to respond. A lesion in the Broca's area can also affect the uh, adjacent primary motor area which can result in hemiparesis which is weakening of both the limbs on the same side or also hemiplegia which is paralysis of both the limbs on the same side. Uh, the patient is well aware of their communication deficit and are more prone to frustration. Hence, self-monitoring is very very important in these patients. Currently, there is no standard treatment for this aphasia. However, speech therapy is uh, given in these patients. Hello? Hello Sneha? Where are you? There is something wrong with Sriparna. I am so confused. I don't know what to do. I am at the hospital. Can you help me with this? Hello? Auntie, what happened? Sriparna is in the hospital? What? Okay, okay. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll come soon. Auntie, what happened to Sriparna? Sriparna? What happened? Are you okay? Godness, full throttle, mega death, ultra pro max, imminence, infectious, Bagatalika, dang dang, zombie fire what? tomorrow. Auntie, what happened to her? What's going on? I don't know what happened to her. Even I'm very confused. Hello, Mrs. Ananya. Hello, doctor. She is Snega, Sriparna's friend. She is studying first year MBBS in the same college. Yes, doctor. I'm not able to understand what's going on with Sriparna. Can you please explain clearly? Okay, I'll explain. The condition which has been demonstrated here is called sensory or vernicase aphasia. Aphasia in general means loss or impairment of speech due to any lesion in brain. Vernicase aphasia, it is called so because vernicase area which is located in posterior superior temporal gyrus which corresponds to area number 22 of Broadman's area. This type of aphasia is also called fluent aphasia. There are two main features of this aphasia. First one is impairment of comprehension of speech. Second one is paraphasic speech, which means usage of inappropriate or meaningless words. This aphasia results from loss of blood flow to brain. Stroke or any head injury, speech therapy is the main treatment for aphasia in general. Lastly, we are going to talk about global aphasia. So, global aphasia is considered to be a combination of both motor aphasia and sensory aphasia. Motor aphasia is seen in the Broca's area, which are the area 44 and 45. And sensory aphasia is seen in the Wernicke's area, which is area number 22, 39 and 40, which are considered to be auditory areas. So, and in this type of aphasia, the person loses the ability to read, write and understand what he or she is speaking. However, the person will possess normal cognitive and intellectual abilities which are not related to speech and language. Global aphasia is mainly seen as a result of either brain injury or trauma or as a result of uh, stroke. And the degree of global aphasia will vary depending on the degree of the brain injury. Did you know that 8 to 10 lakh people in India are affected by aphasia? Or that 2 million in the US are diagnosed with this disorder? No, right? This is because aphasia is one of the most overlooked diseases. This aphasia is something out of the ordinary. People with little to no knowledge about this disorder tend to exclude those who suffer from it. In conclusion, we would like you to understand that dealing with aphasia is no small task and that those who suffer from it face no end of hardship. We hope our video helped you learn more about this disorder. Thank you for watching.